Generation 2 I think is one of the best sequels to a game that I've played. It pretty much fixes up a good chunk of the original generation's bugs and that's just the original versions like you know gold, silver, and crystal. The remakes on the other hand I think feel pretty good to play and even then they do still add a lot of the more recent mechanics to the series and frankly I do think that it's still pretty fun. Even these games and including this original versions I think add a good amount of context to keep you playing and especially with the remakes they add a whole lot to make me believe that these are some of the better games at least for the post game content so there's that. But of course for this one I'll just go over the generation as a whole, some things I liked and some things I did just like I did with the generation 1 video. So nonetheless let's actually get into it. A good starting point for this generation has to be the Pokemon and I do think a lot of them look great and I know that fact that a lot of them will kind of just transfer over from generation 1 because when they were making that game they made a lot of designs but then ended up scrapping some of them and then reusing them for gen 2. But again, I still do think a lot of them look really nice and even Pokemon like Marie, Purupo and stuff like that have been getting lots of love to this day just because I feel like the fans really do like some of these Pokemon, so props to them. And like the last generation, there still is quite a lot of options you can make with teams, so I do like that. Something this game also shows with the Kanto games is how it opens up during the mid game. As long as you get the fourth batch, you can actually do gyms 5 to 7 in any order. Again, you do need self, but after you get that, you can basically do Jasmine Gym before Chucks because as long as you get the medicine for Jasmine, you can just do whatever the hell you want in that part. And I really do like it just because Pokemon hasn't really done that in recent games and I just really like the openness of it. Another thing that's been a staple in the series has to be the day and night cycle. And I'll give it full credit here just because these were the first pair of games to actually do it. With the days changing, you can actually find different Pokemon on different days. Like for example, I think there was that Lapras in like one of the caves that you can only get on I think the weekend. I'm not exactly sure, but there was that Lapras. And then you can find different Pokemon at different times and have berries grow whenever you want. Or at least once per day. And I think it really makes the world feel more alive because that way you can actually go outside, see it's dark and then it's dark in game. And I feel again, it just makes it feel lot cooler just because it reflects real life and I really do applaud Game Freak for actually trying that even on the Game Boy Color. And then another thing I really liked had to be the balance and it fixes a lot of the original game's problem. That being with the code itself or just other factors like splitting the special attack into its special events like how it is now and it just makes it feel a lot more balanced. And that along with the new Pokemon and new types, I feel it makes the joint a lot more balanced and May, really makes it feel like it's more in your favor than the game's favor because you know the psychic types were basically overpowered and not all the moves work correctly so I feel like again they actually tried to make this game a lot more balanced in comparison. Then there was the rival and despite several not being my personal favorite at least Game Freak had tried to give him a arc. He starts off a little arrogant and later on he begins to care for his Pokemon which isn't really showed much in the main game but I still feel there was some and even in the post game he does get a Crobat which I found cool because he does evolve it by friendship which again I think it's at least a somewhat good character arc for him. I also do think that the biggest things people remember about Gen 2 has to be his post game and frankly I do agree that this is probably the best post game we've got in the series. And I'm also talking about the original games and the remakes cause in the originals they actually give you a second region to explore that being the Kanto region. It has changed somewhat from the original but I still do think that it's a little bit cooler to see what has changed in between the games and even in Crystal all of that is still there but they even also added a battle tower which is a nice touch because you know you already had a good post game and then you get an extra facility. And then there's the remakes which actually adds in a lot of different stuff like the Pokeathlon, the Battle Frontier, and catching a whole bunch of different legendaries that were introduced up until that point. These games to me feel the most complete in terms of just extra content and that's always a good thing just because I also do feel that a lot of the other games like uh, starting from Gen 6 just lacked a lot of this content. But other than the amazing post games, these games still do have some problems. One of them has to be Team Rocket yet again. They were torn and I feel they're just as bad as they were in Gen 1. 
they don't really do much of note other than act crazy and I do still feel they're really lacking because at most they just hijack a radio tower to try and call Giovanni and that's pretty much it. Other than that, I find a really odd aspect of Gen 2 is that what Pokemon are available in the main game. And even in the original Gen 2, there are quite a bit of Pokemon that you either get later on or you just don't get in the main game. Pokemon like Houndow, Sneasel, and Teddyoso are some of the ones you actually get way later on. But in the case of Houndow and Teddyoso, I'm pretty sure you get them in post game, which is pretty dumb since they were new Gen 2 Pokemon. And I feel it's again dumb to have those new Pokemon only be available in the post game. And I do know that there are some other Pokemon that you can get early on, like Mareep, Vampy. And some other ones, it's just again really weird how some of the other Pokemon, especially some of the new dog types, are just available way later on. Then there's also just getting stone evolutions, and I mostly just need these stone evolutions. In every other game, I would say it's fairly easy to get at least one stone throughout the main story, but in Gen 2, it's pretty much up until RNG. At least in the original games, because I do think that the remakes added the Poke Athlon, which get, lets you get stones, I don't remember correctly. But in most cases, it's pretty much just up to the bug catching contest. Or I think there was a trainer that can call you that he can give you a stone evolution. But I still do think that it's pretty stupid that it's just up until RNG. But regardless of the flaws, I do think that these games add so much in content, especially in the remakes. These games can last you a long time and I feel that's a good thing. If you're looking for a good pair of games just for the post game, I still do think that Gen 2 probably has some of the best ones. And even in the remakes, you still have a lot of options since they're all Gen 3 and 4 Pokemon there if you can get them. But in the end, I still do think that whatever version you do play, whether that be the Game Boy Color versions or the DS games, I still do think you'll have a fun time. But as always, let's go over the likes and dislikes. Likes, good Pokemon designs, somewhat open around the mid to late game, day and night system, better balancing, pretty okay rival, best post game in the series, whether that be the remakes or the original, and pretty amazing remakes. Dislikes, bad villains, new Pokemon are saved to later so you can't really like experiment much in the main story, and certain evolutions are locked behind RNG. But regardless, thank you all for watching and see you guys later.